Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Standards, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today is the last video in the Nerve Physiology series. We'll have a quick review. If you have watched my last nine videos, this will be a glorious review. If you have not, you will not understand a thing. This is part of my physiology playlist. In that playlist, video 1 through 25 is talking about the cell membrane, transport, osmosis, fixed principle, donors, equilibrium, etc. From the 26th video to the 40th video, we're talking about autonomic nervous system. From 41 to 50, this was the nerve physiology that we are in, and we are video number 50 right now. It's the review. Videos 51 through 60 will talk about muscle physiology. This will be a very quick review. If you have any problems, go watch the previous videos. The structure of the neuron, you have dendrites, soma, axon, and axon terminus. The nerve impulse goes in one direction only, downwards. But how about retrograde axonal transport? Shut up, that's a totally different thing. Retrograde axonal transport is for some nutrients, for some substances, but it's not for the nerve impulse. The nerve impulse goes only downwards. But how about the propagation of the action potential? Yes, it's bi-directional. However, the end result is a nerve impulse going downwards. We're talking about the net effect here. Anything that goes in the other direction is gonna die because it does not reach the soma. It only goes this way. Types of neuron, you have pseudo-unipolar, bipolar, multipolar. And the multipolar has different shapes, including the motor neurons of the spinal cord, pyramidal cells of the hippocampus, and the Purkinje cell of the cerebellum. When your muscle contract, when your skin feels, when your glands secrete, when your eye sees, when you hear, all of this is basically action potential. The nerve impulse is unidirectional, we call it orthodromic. The nerve impulse starts at the axon hillock, the most excitable part of the axon. You have more sodium in the ECF and more potassium in the ICF. During rest, the inside of the membrane is more negative. Upon activation, what happens? Sodium enters. Sodium is positive, making the inside of the membrane more positive. When it's more positive on the inside, we call this activation or depolarization or reversal of polarity. Local anesthetics affect the small fibers first, C fibers. C fibers are thin and unmyelinated. Hypoxia or pressure, the effect type A fibers first because they are bigger. Pressure slash hypoxia, the effect A first, local anesthetics affect C first. The nerve excitability is the ability of the nerve to respond to stimuli. Most of the time it's electrical stimulation. But it doesn't have to be electrical stimulation. For example, if I touch your optic nerve, you might see some stuff. I'm not joking, by the way. Whether you stimulate my optic nerve electrically, chemically, thermally, or mechanically, the end result is the optic nerve is stimulated and it's gonna carry vision impulses. Factors that affect the effectiveness of electrical stimuli include the rate, the strength, and the duration. Strength and duration are called the strength duration curve, and the relation is inverse, which means the stronger the stimulus, the shorter the duration. What is chronaxi the time needed by a current whose intensity is double the ray base to excite the nerve? If you see this graph, A here is minimal time, and as you see, the minimal time is at the highest intensity. This is the ray base. The time of that rear base is called utilization time. If you double the rear base, the time of that double rear base is called tronaxi. These are all the types of the electricity of the nerve. During rest, I'm resting. Upon stimulation, if you treat me with respect, I'll give you an action potential. If you treat me with no respect, I can give you electrotonic potential, cat electrotonus and an electronus, or I give you local response. None of these hold a candle to the action potential. Michael Jordan is the GOAT, but the action potential is the real MVP. During rest, potassium is leaving, leaving the inside more negative. Upon activation, sodium is entering, the inside is positive. And then you stop the sodium channels, you open the potassium again, called repolarization. When you overshoot its hyperpolarization, inward rectifying potassium channels will push some potassium in, returning you back to 90. During rest, the inside is negative, therefore the outside is positive, relatively speaking. Selective permeability is that potassium leaving. Also, sodium is entering during rest, but potassium leaving dwarfs the sodium entrance. What causes the resting membrane potential? The selective permeability and the sodium-potassium pump. Potassium leaving versus sodium entering. Which one is more important? The potassium efflux. How did you know? Nernest equation told me. What are the causes of the resting membrane potential? Selective permeability and the sodium-potassium AT base pump. Which one is more important? Selective permeability. How did you know? Goldman informed me. Here is the Nernest equation. Pause and review. This is the Goldman's equation. Sodium problems cause CNS problems, but calcium problems cause cardiac problems. 
The rule of fours. The polarized state is caused by the potassium efflux. Action potential, baby. Give me something good. Give me a threshold. And then boom, look at this. Yep, look at this firing. Depolarization, repolarization, hyperpolarization. Back to the resting state. Depolarization doesn't take any time. It's just two milliseconds. But hyper, oh, that takes a lot of time. What causes depolarization? The sodium influx. How about repolarization? Closure of the sodium channels to stop the sodium influx and then open the potassium channel to allow for potassium efflux. And then potassium is leaving, leaving, leaving. Okay, you should stop now. You should close the potassium channel. But I'm a potassium channel. I'm slow at opening and slow at closing. All right, so I'm going to overshoot. And then other potassium channels known as the inward rectifying potassium channel are going to let the potassium in and raise it from negative 100 to a negative 90. We have slow depolarization followed by rapid depolarization. Here, some sodium channels are open, but here, all of the sodium channels are open. What's the magnitude of the entire action potential? Okay, from negative 90 to 0, that's 90. And from 0 to 35, that's 35. 90 plus 35 is 125 millivolts. The stimulus was given here. Why do we have an artifact here? Because electrons are faster than ions. The electricity from the stimulus is faster than the electricity in your nerve. Between giving the stimulus and the actual firing of the depolarization, you have this period that's known as the latent period. Oh, by the way, if you want to download these notes, I have them available on my website in PDFs. Just go to metacosisperfectsnetics.com. Leave it to beaver. I mean, leave it to sodium. Sodium is responsible for your depolarization. Sodium channels, the voltage-gated sodium channels are very fast. Fast at opening, boom. Fast at closing, boom. But the voltage-gated potassium channels are very slow. Slow at opening, boom, slow at closing, ew. Put the sodium and the potassium graphs together. Sodium, fast at opening, fast at closing, slow at opening, slow at closing. Pause and review. Potassium channels come in many types. I'll give you just two. The leaky inward rectifying potassium channels, they are always open, they have no gate. And the slow acting voltage gated potassium channel, they are gated. Slow acting, slow compared to what? To the sodium ones. Because the voltage gated potassium channels are slow at opening and slow at closing. Slow at opening and that's why repolarization starts after depolarization. And that's why repolarization lasts longer than depolarization. They are also slow at closing and that's why you have hyperpolarization. That's why you overshoot. The voltage gated sodium channels have two gates. The potassium ones have one gate. That's why sodium is faster than potassium. Because if you have two gates, you are like a revolving door. But if you have one gate, you are like a good old door. There is a reason why skyscrapers have a revolving door. It's faster. Let's say that it takes the channel one second to rotate by 45 degrees. Okay, one second for sodium and it goes from here to here. One second for potassium goes from this close state to this. All right, give it another second. Look at this. The sodium channel has opened and closed in just two seconds. But look at the potassium. It has only opened. It is yet to close. Give it another two seconds to close. Here it is. So four seconds for the potassium channel to open and close. Only two seconds for the sodium to open and close. Sodium channels are way faster than potassium channels. Sodium channels, two gates. The outer one is known as the activated gate because when it opens, sodium comes in depolarization. However, the inner one is the inactivation gate because when it closes, depolarization is over. The inner is the inactivation gate. The ionic basis of the action potential was discussed before stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4, stage 5, stage 6. Pause and review. After the party is over, who's gonna clean the mess? The sodium potassium 80 pace pump. All or none law. There is no sorta kinda ish. If you give me a threshold, I'll give you a response. If you give me something below the threshold, I'm not gonna do anything. Something above the threshold, I'm still gonna give you the same response that I gave you. It's either all or none, no in between. Refractory period is the period which the nerve is refractory. It does not respond. There is the absolute refractory period and the relative refractory period. Absolute starts from the firing level to the end of the first part of repolarization. Why do we have an absolute refractory period? Because the sodium channels have just closed. They can't open instantaneously because of inertia. You gotta wait. The relative is from the end of the absolute refractory period to the resting membrane potential. Subthreshold can give you electrotonic potential such as cat electrotonus and N electrotonus. All of these are called non-propagated potential. Cat electrotonus is at the cathode and there is increased nerve excitability. And electrotonus at the anode, there is decreased nerve excitability. Of course, if the excitability is low, it means the threshold is high. 
But if the excitability is high, it means the threshold is lowered. Local response. Subthreshold stimulus does not obey the all or none law. No, absolute refractory period not propagated and not all of your sodium channels are open. Action potential versus local response. Action potential obeys the all or none law, therefore cannot be graded. Has an absolute refractory period, therefore cannot be summated. All of the sodium channels are open. Anesthesia will destroy your action potential. Contrast that with the local response. No, all or none law, therefore can be graded. No, absolute refractory period, therefore can be summated. Not all of the sodium channels are open. If you treat me with respect, I'll give you action potential that propagates. If you treat me with no respect, I'll give you a local response that does not propagate. Hypokalemia and hyperkalemia both can lead to muscle abnormalities, including the heart. Hypokalemia will push you away from the threshold, making it hard for you to activate. Hyperkalemia will push you closer to threshold, making it easier for you to depolarize. Factors that increase nerve excitability include hypocalcemia, hyperkalemia, but the factors that decrease nerve excitability, aka the membrane stabilizers, include hypercalcemia, hypokalemia, and prolonged blockade of the sodium potassium pump. How do you treat hyperkalemia? Six steps. How to boil a frog? Raise the temperature one degree at a time. Such is the method of accommodation. Accommodation. Here's the difference between giving you a sudden stimulus versus a gradual increase in the stimulus. If I give you sudden stimulus, you're gonna respond. If I increase the stimulus intensity gradually, you're not gonna respond. You will accommodate. You will get used to it. Does the nerve need energy? Absolutely. It produces more heat during recovery than during depolarization. Increased calcium extracellulary is a membrane stabilizer. Lithium is a mood stabilizer. And plate potential is excitatory. Excitatory postsynaptic potential, they are excitatory, well, no kidding. But the inhibitory postsynaptic potentials are inhibitory. Let's talk about neurotransmitters. Glutamate and aspartate are excitatory neurotransmitters, but GABA and glycine are inhibitory. And that's why benzodiazepines and barbiturates are sedatives and hypnotics. Oh, because when you stimulate the GABA, you get what? Inhibition. You are sedated. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Monophasic versus biphasic. Which one is used clinically? Monophasic. All of what we have discussed with the action potential in the singular fiber. What about the action potential in the entire nerve, like the median nerve? It's called the compound action potential. Compound action potential actually can be graded, unlike the good old action potential of the singular fiber. Action potential propagation was discussed before. Remember, there is a potential difference between the stimulated and the resting, making a closed circuit. The speed of propagation is directly proportional to the square root of the diameter of the nerve. It's also directly related with the internodal distance. The longer the distance between two nodes of Ranvier, the faster the speed of propagation. And as the nerve fiber gets thicker, the internodal distance increases and the speed of propagation will also increase. That's why A fibers are the best. When you activate the sodium channel and let the sodium in, you'll cause deposition, which is activation. Too much activation in your brain, you get seizures. And that's why anti-epileptic medications work by inhibiting the sodium channel, at least most of them. Sodium channel activation will cause deporization, activation. In my heart, I get arrhythmia. And that's why many antiarrhythmics are sodium channel blockers, especially class 1 antiarrhythmics, leading to no arrhythmia. Pharmacology makes perfect sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Here are your antiarrhythmics blocking the sodium channels. Benzodiazepines and barbiturates bind the GABA and stimulate the GABA and increase the opening of the chloride channel. Chloride comes into the neuron. Chloride is negative. When the negatives comes into the nerve, this is a state of inactivation. Hashtag sedation, hashtag hypnosis. When a patient rushes into the hospital screaming or having a seizure or very agitated or kicking the doctors and the nurses, you give benzodiazepines. Local anesthetics also block the sodium channels. Familial periodic paralysis was discussed before. What's the solution? Give the baby potassium. Let's review some local anesthetics from Picmonic. Let's go. Local anesthetics. 
are used for minor procedures. They are also used for epidural anesthesia. How do they work? They block the sodium channels, block sodium, usually combined with vasoconstrictors such as epinephrine. Look at this constrictor right here. Some of the local anesthetics are esters, the Easter bunny. Others are amides. Side effects include arrhythmias, here is your sad heart, and cardiotoxicity. If you like this video, you will love my autonomic pharmacology course on my website. I also have a CNS pharmacology course talking about all of these topics and Utacoids pharmacology course talking about the cyclic AMP, the histamine, the serotonin, treatment of peptic ulcer disease, etc. And for a limited time, you can get a 40% discount towards anything on my website. Just use promo code histamine for a limited time only at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionitis, where medicine makes perfect sense.